have a heavy heart. The senior senator from New Jersey and my friend, Frank Lightenberg, died this morning, as we all know. My thoughts are with his lovely old wife, Bonnie, his children, and 13 grandchildren. Few people in the history of this institution have contributed as much to our nation and to the United States Senate as Frank Lautenberg. His success story is really what the American dream is all about. He came from a family of working class immigrants from Eastern Europe, Russia and Poland. His parents struggled. I've heard Frank talk about how they struggled. Uh, they worked so hard. They moved around New Jersey often. When Frank was 18, during the middle of World War II, he enlisted in the United States Army. During World War II, he served in the Signal Corps. And I can remember Frank talking about his experiences in the European theater. Once he's, as I said, he was on the Army Signal Corps. He's up on a power line, a wooden power pole. And he can see the <laughs> war going on with, in his sight. During uh, World War II, he talked about the many experiences he had, as he said, making him a better American. He was very proud of this military service. He is the last World War II veteran, having served in the Senate. We don't have any World War II veterans anymore, Mr. President. His death is a great loss for this institution in many, many different ways. <clears throat> When Frank came home from the war, he was obviously very smart and was permitted to attend the very prestigious Columbia University. He did it, of course, on the GI Bill, like millions of other returning Americans did. But he quickly found his own business, his own company. He did it with two boyhood friends, all three of them from New Jersey, three kids from New Jersey, under his leadership, this firm, Automatic Data Processing, known as ADP, grew into the largest computing service company of its kind in the world. He was so very, very proud of that company. And he never hesitated to tell everyone that he made money. He became rich. He was a poor boy <clears throat> who became wealthy as a result <clears throat> of people being able to fulfill their dreams as people can do in America. <clears throat> Frank was, wasn't content with his personal success alone. He was proud of a lot of the civic and charitable things he did, but nothing made him more proud of what he did outside government than when he served as the head of the United Jewish Appeal, known as the Jewish Federations of North America. He was very proud of that. <clears throat> Mr. President, Frank Lautenberg was known for many, many things. Um, before he came to the Senate. But he ran an impossible race for the Senate and was elected. In 1982, he came to the Congress the same year that I did. And in the three decades since, he's worked tirelessly on behalf of his state and the country. He retired once. He couldn't stand retirement. He hated retirement. He couldn't stay away from public service and he returned to the Senate again in 2002. He had a remarkable career. I've just touched upon a few of the things. His determination that made him successful in the private sector also served him well in the United States Senate. Mr. President, motivated by his own experience, Senator Lautenberg, a World War II veteran, co-wrote the 21st Century GI Bill of Rights recognizing he did how much this meant to him. And he wanted to help ensure that veterans returning from Iraq and Afghanistan enjoyed the same opportunities for education that helped him become so successful. And Ms. President, um, my youngest boy just hated c cigarette smoke. And it really made him ill. And um, Airplanes, remember we went through a procedure there where you could smoke every place in the airplane and finally only part of the airplane, but it didn't matter. Everybody sucked in that secondhand smoke.
Frank Lautenberg took care of my boy and millions of other people uh, that would no longer have to suck in that smoke when they're in an airplane. He is the one, more than anyone else, that we have to thank for protecting us from deadly secondhand smoke in an airplane <clears throat> because his legislation banned smoking on airplanes. He also was a longtime member of the Environment and Public Works Committee. Had he not retired for that very short period of time that he did, he would have been chairman of that committee because he wasn't there. I got the opportunity to be chair of that committee, actually on two separate occasions. So he focused on this nation's infrastructure, roads and highways. And one of the things he thought that would make this country a much safer place is to pass a drinking limit. That is, you couldn't drink alcohol any place in the country until you're 21 years of age, and that's what he did. A national drunk driving standard is what it was called. He believed in helping the state of New Jersey. That was his first priority. And his second priority was helping the country. And I'm not sure which order they came. It was hard to understand the difference between Frank Lautenberg because he was focused on the country and New Jersey at the same time. Frank wanted to make sure women and children were protected from gun violence. And because of him, we passed legislation here that convicted domestic abusers couldn't own firearms. So just a few examples of his work here in the Senate that literally saved lives. And, Mr. President, he came out of his sickbed in a wheelchair to vote on gun legislation. He agreed with 90 percent of the American people, the people who had severe mental problems or were felons shouldn't be able to buy a gun. He agreed with 90 percent of the American people. And he came from his bed to come here and vote with us. He was so happy to be here. He came once after that, just a few days ago, to vote when we needed him again. <clears throat> he tried so hard. Talking to Bonnie today, she said he was confident he'd live to be 100. He was a very strong man physically. Uh, April, a couple <coughs> years ago, I took a big delegation to China, bipartisan group. It was a wonderful trip. Frank Lautenberg, that was his last foreign travel. And I can remember indicating what a strong man he was physically. We were, I, I hadn't been to the Great Wall of China. I don't know how many of the other 10 senators had been, but I hadn't been. And it's pretty steep and uh, big rocks there that's been there for so those centuries and centuries. And there were, because Frank was 88 years old at the time, Somebody grabbed his arm to help him go up there. He pushed them away. He wanted no help from anybody. He was uh, on his own. That's the way he wanted to be. I, our nation, owes a great debt of gratitude for Frank for his outstanding service. He has always been so kind to me. He was, he was one that really appreciated his service. He appreciated being here. He loved being in the Senate. And the nation's going to miss his strength and his progressive leadership. Um, Mr. President, the other thing that probably a lot of people don't know about Frank Lautenberg, his sense of humor. I had him tell the story because no one could tell the story like him. But uh, another reason I kind of liked I, I like Frank is he laughed at his own jokes. He thought they were funny, as most everyone listening to them did. One of, one of our favorites was uh, about two wrestlers. He had a, there was a pretzel move that he would, it would take him about five minutes or more to tell the story, but it was hilarious. No one could tell like Frank. So he had a sense of humor, and we certainly appreciated that. Even though the United States Senate, Mr. President, uh, at midnight last night had Al Franken, and we still have Al Franken, but there was room for two funny people prior to Frank's death this morning. Frank and, and uh, Al, Frank Lautenberg, Al Franken, always made us smile and often made us laugh. Now, 
I guess it's going to be up to Senator Franken to do this alone because they were both really, really funny together and apart. So it's with deep sadness that his Senate's family is going to say goodbye. We're going to do that Wednesday morning. Uh, say goodbye to an exemplary public servant, a faithful friend, Senator Frank Lautenberg.